Testing. <clears throat> all righty, well, I want to commend all of you because the activity level here is still very high, even through lunch. However, table facilitators, we need to start wrapping it up because we want to start pinning up the drawings in about 10 minutes. All right? It's your 10-minute countdown.
Our little friend go. Okay, everyone, <clears throat> we're going to start with our presentations. We're going to start with, what's your name? Beth in table number three. It's okay, just present the idea. That's good. Okay, everybody listen up. Is everybody listening? Kim? All right, Richard, you have to help too. Okay, our first table, table number three, here you go. that you can see, but there is a lot drawn up here. We got into architectural uh, renderings and things like that. Um, the idea, our ideas, <laughs> what were our ideas? Uh, uh, um, doing art on the wall. Doing art on the walls. Right. So that is one idea that we have. Um, and also enhancing the streetscape, you know, ensuring that it's pedestrian focused, 
Um, so over here we have a... Um, over there we have a map. We have a map. Um, we have a street section. Uh, and the, the concept is to provide... Uh, to provide wider sidewalks, buffered bike lane, um, one way to change it, it. We actually went a little bit farther than just talking about um, the L&M properties and kind of considered the downtown neighborhood, you know, to the south. So to um, make one uh, First Avenue one way similar to the way that Second Avenue is. So you would have one way westbound traffic. Um, and create sections that have on-street parking with uh, probably you know two spaces in a row, then a street tree and a bump out, two spaces, street tree and a bump out. Um, you know, have your bike lane actually on the, the interior edge. So if you have your, your driving area, you're driving south, then you have your street tree and your parking, then you have your bicycle lane, and then you have your pedestrians um, with some palm trees scattered through there. Um, so that's one concept, pedestrian orientation, um, ensuring that the building, you know, is close to the street, I think, to create that urban edge, that urban feel. Um, and then we're not doing the assemblage. Um, we're keeping the properties separated, continuing the platted alleys um, that you have here. We do have uh, mixed use on Lake Avenue. Um, a tower element that kind of speaks to the park that sits catty corner to it. Um, then you would have, you know, like a, a lower height next to that, um, three or four stories next to your, you know, four or five story tower element um, with residential above and retail below or commercial services, whatever type of, you know, avenue-esque uses you would want to have there. Um, then we're preserving the existing, the, the pretty one, it's not up there, but we're preserving that existing structure, preserving the historic structures at two, 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 L and first, um, and creating smaller lots that would promote uh, single family ownership um, with kind of a paseo through there. That was Andrew's term. Um, but that would also kind of pr promote pedestrianism, small scale street with small lots. These would be either 20 by 20 or 20 by 40 or 40 by 40, I'm not sure Richard came up with something good there, um, to promote ownership and also increase density because really, I mean, we do need increased density in some specified areas in order to not have urban sprawl and uh, promote smart growth. So that was our idea. Is that it? Uh, was Richard going to present as well or no? I, I, he's okay. <laughs> Very well done. Um, okay. Table number four. Who's presenting for table number four? Here you go. Hi there. Okay, so we had a kind of a real uh, lightning round robin and we had everybody put their ideas in and I have a huge list here so I'm just going to run okay. off. So we're, uh, we started off by talking about a tram, having an electric tram uh, uh, going to the beach between the, the train tracks and then possibly the second phase could go from FAU, which uh, I know that Tom Convoy is, is a big... Uh, it's not FAU. What? Palm Beach State College. Right, I don't know where FAU came from. Um, <clears throat> uh, ban drive-throughs possibly allow north and south of the lake in Lucerne Corridor, but certainly not within our walkable downtown. Um, the character is what brought many people here, um, and the reason why we're here and the reason why we stay. Um, we don't want enormous uh, buildings built out from, from lot line to lot line, which I think we're seeing now with the annex to the, to the hotel. We don't want 50 apartments next to me, was uh, somebody, something that somebody said. Uh, you know, that's not really why we're here. Um, we want our water protected, our lagoon protected. We want solar panels. We want green uh, areas. We want the cleanest, greenest 
uh, area and uh, be known for that and uh, have butterfly gardens. Um, everybody wants granny flats. Uh, we think that's a really good idea for our, our little town because uh, granny flats allow the character of our town to be preserved but also uh, create a gentle density. Uh, the sh city uh, build Dixie Highway up to be more dense for tax base. The city should have kept people in the historic houses on L and M. Um, keep the historic cottages. Um, there's a really great idea that Tom had with the. Uh, uh, there's the he says there's a lack of small business opportunities for leasing uh, in historic Lake Worth Beach. Develop the historic cottages as a small incubator, uh, business incubator with reasonable rents. Um, there's something with FAU, CPAC, which helps small business, PTAC, PTAC, yes, helps small businesses and, uh, to get uh, to work with the federal government. Um, and uh, n nobody liked the build out element building too many, uh, and then I know Don had a really good point about too many tenancy buildings uh, for expensive apartments. Uh, we should really encourage subsidized entry level housing, like Section 8 housing. One out of every 10 units should be Section 8. And um, this is something that the Prince of Wales uh, incorporated into his town, which sounds very high end and everything, but they have something like 30%. Uh, subsidized housing in in his the town that he built, and they're they're not um, locked away in some kind of high rise. They're integrated into the the whole town, and it's something that we should really encourage. Um, dormitories for the college, um, assisted living, more assisted living spaces, uh, possible open space, which we don't have a whole lot of in downtown. No tall buildings, uh, as green as possible, permeable areas, keep our permeable uh, aquifer to replenish the aquifer and don't overtax our, uh, you know, our, our storm drains, green roofs, solar, trees, no palm trees. That came up over and over again, we need sh shade trees. Uh, two stories in, in town, no more than three on the avenue. Um, small business use, mixed use, lots of trees, lots of shade. Investigate looking at new library. This is sort of a um, renovation uh, and really look at how our civic buildings are being used, the library, the annex, and city hall. Uh, there was an idea that maybe the library could move into the annex and we could renovate that and have it be a, a, a much more visible uh, civic uh, amenity and move the museum to the library. Um, Richard Stowe had an idea about the boutique hotel uh, to be built um, on the L&M site. And I, I think it's true, we do need uh, uses such as that. Um, the penny sales tax should be used to restore the historic buildings uh, with lead standards, uh, turning them into green buildings. It was consensual that everybody at our table wanted to keep the historic buildings. Um, parking in the alleys should, uh, could be redesigned to integrate parking in a more efficient way. Uh, currently, the lighting at the, uh, at the historic buildings has been in integrated to, for safety's sake because there was so much um, you know, infiltration of homeless, et cetera. But um, that has now created a, a Someone at our table actually lives in that condominium there that's, that's right on the corner of First and M. And she said the lighting comes into her, you know, it has unintended consequences for residents. Um, we would like to have a citywide lighting um, uh, that is uh, AMA, goes with the American Medical Association guidelines. Uh, Richard Stowe and his Earth Day, um, Earth Day event had this fantastic guy, I don't know if, if Richard's still here, who is the, uh, he's a doctor, he's on the board of the American Medical Association. He's done a deep dive and in research into the effects of, of um, the ill effects of blue light. And it's, it's shocking, you know, it, it, uh, 
many, many studies on, on breast cancer and, uh, you know, the insect uh, apocalypse. A lot of things are, are related to it, and I would really encourage, if you're at all interested in, in uh, this, this lecture that I saw, uh, it made a big impact on me, and, and Richard can actually talk about it in more detail, but uh, I'd be happy to send you the link because uh, it's, it's just revolutionary. I was just going to say uh, the, the the doctor who spoke was Dr. Mary Omoda. He is a, a car, a, just a recently retired cardiologist who's on the trustee. He worked with um, researchers over a period of years where he they actually did the research and he put it together for uh, peer-reviewed scientific literature that was adop widely adopted. But um, I can, s if anybody's, maybe I could send the video of the Earth Day event to everyone here. And, uh, you know, if you want to just do a search on Dr. Mar just go to Dr. Mary Omota and M-O-T-T-A. Thank you. Uh, he also talked about the Nobel, uh, not the Nobel Prize, whatever, United Nations. United Nations. He presented the United Nations, but also I think it was uh, one of the last scientific prizes was given on this Nobel Prize, Prize yeah. okay, uh, was given on this topic, and it's, it's something that I think uh, as a progressive community we should know about. But also, the, so the cost for the blue lights, so blue lights is a spectrum, right? And the blue lights, people don't like them, so a lot of the first LEDs that came out were very harsh. That's the blue lights. So the softer lights, people like them a lot more, but your body also likes them a lot more. So the, the cost for the city to put a street light in that's a blue street light or a softer street light is the same, doesn't cost us more, and we don't have the negative health effects. But go ahead, that's a whole other topic and I didn't mean to drive you guys into another topic. Yeah, it's also a health issue, it, you know, it's glare and it's, it's a safety issue. So um, there's an idea that the a Move the Community Sustainability Office, which is now out, um, kind of out there, uh, into downtown Lake Worth. And bring those people downtown so that uh, it's easier for uh, folks to go to the office. It's also uh, those people will then eat lunch and, and use the services downtown. Uh, um, somebody wanted to make the building at the LM and Lake a grocery store. You know, I think we, we could use something like that. Um, parking study, according to Donner Shoup, which adheres to the high cost of public parking ideas, which many of you should know about if you don't. Um, it's a deep dive in research of um, how parking can really uh, affect uh, how the walkability of your town. Shade trees, again, no palm trees. That came up over and over. Granny Flats rezone the entire city to allow for these accessory dwelling units. Densit by Lake Avenue, uh, banned surface parking lots. Uh, somebody wants an Olympic pool in downtown on the L&M site. Um, there was an idea about the CRA thinks only about the supply side when they're developing and not about the demand side, which is what we're all about here, is uh, what is it what, that what we want versus what perhaps uh, uh, the CRA is uh, assuming that the town needs. Um, second library west of Dixie or a bookmobile. Uh, we need a transportation plan uh, for, uh, which includes all the multimodal, uh, you know, ways of moving around the town, electric bikes, etc. There's also Circuit, which is a private company which provides electric, you know, rides for free. Those are that guy's really great, uh, and he's now providing that for the Bright Line to West Palm Beach. Uh, we're, we're going to have possibly a Brightline station, somebody talks about, at, uh, and we're... Possibly, it would be, be tri-rail, potentially, and I don't know all the details on it, but it, it would um, be on the eastern tracks. So, and, and we were thinking too, which, right, so basically where we are right now is here, and just outside of us is the train tracks. So uh, this is the historic station that used to be here, and so we thought it would be great to bring that back. 
And, you know, a lot of people have talked about parking for this area. This area is a really, really valuable area to our downtown. If we concentrated, we currently have a parking garage that's going in next to the Bohemian. So if we concentrated our parking in this region here and got the folks that are coming from out of town to park here, then if we have, uh, the big thing here is a connector as well, right? So connecting the existing tri-rail, which is out here, our table really wished that this whole map came all the way back to the existing tri-rail because we feel like this section of the city is the section that we really have a lot of potential opportunity in. Um, and so if we're connecting the tri-rail here, the Palm Beach State College, the downtown, and the beach, we can become a destination city. So somebody from Miami might want to come up and uh, have dinner, go to the beach, and the more, to become a destination city, something like a gondola, which I know people have laughed at, uh, something like that is something that could make it stand out. And I want to encourage you guys to think big, because City West Palm Beach is considering a tunnel in front of the, the, the um, convention center. If you don't think big, it doesn't happen, okay? And just because we think big doesn't mean that's what we end up going with, right? So maybe we talk about a gondola, maybe it becomes a tram, maybe it becomes the circuit, but it's the connector. We have one of the most walkable cities in South Florida here. If you live within three to five blocks of Lake and Lucerne, you're connected to just about everything you need. You've got the beach, you've got a grocery store, you've got plenty of banks. I, there's not a lot that we need, but there are some things that could, could add value. <laughs> now, one of the things, we've assembled this land. I think it may have been a little bit too soon to assemble the land, but nonetheless, we've got the assemblage. So what could we potentially do in the interim? Because this is extremely valuable land for our, our city, and what goes in here is gonna really influence our future, right? So if we did a small business incubator here, right? Maybe we work with FAU and the PTAC at FAU to bring it all, all here, right? Or maybe some other uh, small business incubator type stuff, right? We could restore the historic properties, uh, put small businesses in there. I, I'm, I'm a small business owner, so I, I have an engineering firm, which is right here. It's in an old house. My team loves the old house. It's a nice, comfortable space. And that, that's part of the land use that's allowed in here. And the more we foster and create that, we have, so one of the, another unique part of Lake Worth is we have very small lots and small houses. So we have some of the cheapest housing if you wanna buy a single family home in Palm Beach County, right? You almost have to go to Port St. Lucie to start hitting the price points in Lake Worth. Now, that being said, that's because we also have high cost per square foot because most of our houses are less than 1,000 square feet. They're about 900, two bedroom, one bath. That's most of our, our of our housing stock. Um, so if we were to put a bunch of low rent housing in here, maximum how many new people are gonna bring in? Not that many new people, relative to all of the, the rest of the housing. So my, my thing is, is that if we bring small businesses in and we focus on the small businesses like engineers, accountants, architects, insurance, agents, um, you name it. What are some other small businesses out there? <laughs> Baker, yeah. So, so any of these types of things, then people have places to go to work, right? And it brings into our economy. The other piece that's really interesting, how many of you guys know what a hub zone is? Awesome. So a hub zone is a historically underutilized business zone. It's a federal designation, and businesses that are located in a hub zone, which a lot of Lake Worth, not all of Lake Worth is a hub zone, but you also have to have your, you have to have your headquarters there, and 35% of your employees need to live in the hub zone. 
then that gives you a status that allows you to go after federal contracts. And it helps you get in the door with the federal, federal uh, contracts. So if we're able to encourage more businesses to uh, get their hubs on status and bring federal work here, it also employs our people, right? Now, with that hub zone status, it doesn't necessarily give you any free money. Some people think that there's a lot of free money out there. It's not. It just opens the door so that you can do the work. With the hub zone also, uh, some people think, somebody said that I'm trying to keep the, the values down here so we stay hub zone. They will not reevaluate the hub zone numbers for another 10 years at the next census. And for me to try to keep the incomes down for the whole region is absurd, right? It's not going to happen. 10 years from now, I'll be retired, OK? So, but I do want other businesses to recognize the value of what they can do there and bring that into our city. Great. Well done. <laughs> just, just to add to, I'm just not my, at the end of my little list, um, there's, everybody's quite passionate that we need to pre preserve our industrial zone. Um, gentrification can wipe out small businesses, and we have a very productive, walkable industrial zone where you can get your car serviced, your air conditioning uh, mechanic is there, and, and we all know it, and it's near the railroad track, and we need to get, send a big message to the city that, that this is a, a valuable resource for our town. So there we go. Okay, we got table. What table are you, Jessica? Six. All right, come on up. Just put it on top. Okay, and um, what table are you guys? That's Jessica. What table are you guys? Seven? No, just leave it. Just leave it. Okay, table seven? Yes. You want it? Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, you want to hang it up? Yeah. Okay, Jessica, who's presenting from your table? Richard already. Richard just presented. He gets two bites at the apple, huh? Okay. Here you go. Thank you. What is your name? My name is Suki, and I don't want to present, so. So, but I have to, so, so I'm not sure where to go from here. Can I give the microphone to you, Jesse? I'm just going to ban a white for me. So we did, well, you get the mic. I'll oh. So we've got rules that we established for each of the members of our table. So if you want to go over your rules, that might be a good place to Yeah, just read, just read from the list. That's okay. Fine. Sure. Okay, sure. So Drew's rules are uh, solar, historic, Keep, um, keeping the historic buildings, however, if they have to be moved, um, that's a possibility. Mixed housing uh, as types rental and affordable. He wants mostly rental, actually, Drew. Shade trees, um, and a big one for Drew was no single-use plastics in the whole, you know, this whole area. Uh, in, for sure, the universe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the litter problem. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, so my, uh, my uh, priorities here are the scale and architecture. I want to keep it small town. Um, you know, we have a lot of mid-century houses in this city, a lot. So, I mean, I like that look and Art Deco. Mobility, um, let's, let's really encourage bikes and pedestrians downtown. Um, even make it, you know, a walking street works with me. Again, tree shades and canopies, and a big one: solar roofs, solar panels on the roofs, or and or uh, rooftop gardens. Okay. Let me keep going. Did you? What did you say about scale, please? The first one, small town. Small, small town. Yeah. Highest is three stories. Yeah. Uh, Dawn's rules. 
he's got, do you want to kind of interpret that for me? Oh, um, the architecture, also important, no brutalism. Color <laughs> and this, again, Art Deco. Um, curves in the architecture, front of architecture. Human scale, details along the frontage, not bokeh. Trees. Tropical. Okay. Could you use the mic, please? Yeah, I'm going to go over uh, Rick's again then. More people, he, he wants more people downtown. I think he means businesses. Uh, more people living downtown. Okay. Um, home ownership allowed growing. Okay. Adoptive view use of historic structures to communities. So in other words, we can take the historic structures and build on them, we're keeping them, but you know, make them uh, more useful. And they do, they've done that in a lot of places, works. Um, so hit, whose is this? Oh, this, you want to do yours? Um, my, uh, I'd like to see the, the Art Deco building at 501 that people know as the Chamber of Commerce um, preserved. And there's actually an addition that's like a storage area. I'd like to have that storage area removed and like make that a patio and then use that building, convert it from office to retail. And it's specifically like a small, um, you know, uh, zero waste grocery store a healthy grocery store. And I wouldn't mind it if there was a little bit of some basic um, things that you would get at a, like you'd get at Home Depot, but without having to go to Home Depot, just like right downtown. And um, the second thing is, yeah, hard, like, a, like a little section, a little tiny hardware store within that, so that people didn't have to go out of town to like pick up some basic, hardware stuff when they're working on their house. Um, the second thing is is the empty lot that hasn't been talked too much about at First Avenue South and uh, South K Street, the northeast corner. I've done a diagram of, um, actually, Edmund LeBanc, uh, who serves on the planning, <laughs> and, uh, planning commission. Uh, he, we did, like, we fit in a U United States competitive pool in that um, it's a double lot and a pool house. And I see that as a way to bring like a new flow of people into town that would come in, use the pool, swim, have, and then it would be used, it's a daytime use. So most of our activity is in the evening, like our downtown, so it'd be complimentary. And then they would naturally flow. Some people would like end up using what the downtown has to offer after they go to the pool. Um, and then the third thing is, is we were a number of us were just shocked and dismayed when 23 South M, the two um, structures there, were um, demolished in January of 2020. Um, in its place, I think a boutique hotel would be something that would like bring people into the city. People who live in the city would come to visit the boutique hotel if it had a little restaurant or whatever. It's just, it would like create like a focus on, on this whole area that the CRA is, we're so lucky that the CRA is invested in. And I'll just say that I do support the restoration of all of the structures and I do support using um, the penny sales tax, because there's specifically language in the penny sales tax that uh, you can do energy efficiency improvements um, with existing structures. So. Did you have anything else? No. All right, very good job. Thank you. Woo! All right, Sweetie. Thank you.
Thank you, Richard. I like this Key West Florida vernacular, streamline modern Art Deco. It's a lot of styles. That's great. <laughs> Easily, easily. Second only, I would say, to South Beach. Yeah. It's an incredible collection. And we, yeah, we got to see all that. Imagine the audacity, though, of architects creating a style called brutalism. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been waiting all day for that. Um, okay, table number seven. Who's presenting for table number seven? We can't get any help from Priscilla. No, no. So, <laughs> she was panicking, like, where's Jose? Where's Jose? So, um, my name is Cliff, and uh, I live within this district here. And, um, yeah, thank you. Now, um, I want to start with a very high level appreciation of what we've been speaking about. And actually, it was later in the conversation that this came up. And that was, uh, in the downtown corridor, there's a lot of empty uh, retail. And that's because I think some of the landlords are asking unrealistic um, prices for the uh, for their rentals. And there is the possibility for a vacancy surtax if we, um, if we're, if we, if we have the, the will to do it. And I think the commission can do this. Um, a vacancy surtax would um, disincentivize land banking um, and overcharging, and it would probably fill up some of those storefronts that we can utilize. Um, that doesn't specifically relate to our little community here, but um, the other high level thing that did come up early in our conversation was that our downtown here was never a blighted or slum area. And those are the uh, criteria for the establishment that they are in the charter for the CRA. They are their their purpose is statewide in the state of Florida. It's to eliminate slum and blight. That was not the case before these these properties were acquired and then unfortunately left empty. Um, so the first thing is we'd like to see the uh, the lines the. Uh, the uh, historic, the, 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 the guidelines kind of redistricted for the CRA so that they are actually working within areas that qualify for uh, redevelopment. And particularly smaller uh, projects, not big, huge projects, because we feel that the developers of uh, places like the Bohemian and the um, Deco Green got advantages that some of our smaller businesses didn't get. And the small and medium-sized businesses are really the lifeblood of a town. Um, there is a small minority of this community who thinks that really the, the answer is in out-of-town developers who we have to incentivize because they wouldn't want to come here, would they, if we didn't give them a lot of money. Um, and then they come in and do something that really doesn't fit with our community. So that's, that's my rant. <laughs> so. <laughs> And I think that, that that kind of is the story of how the element went wrong because once people saw what that looked like, they didn't want that in our downtown. And um, when the RFP went out, there was this idea that we don't need to give any stipulations, any specification. They don't have to abide by our design guidelines. Let's just see what comes back. And then we get three bids that none of which were really particularly good, but we took the least bad one and said, let's go with that because we gotta do something. And then it, by then the community is clamoring for something to be done and there's no will on behalf of the HRPB or the city commission to oppose it. And so we threw them out of office. <laughs> and that's, that's literally what happened. The majority of this community did not want a high density 
development that was out of character downtown. And we, the only way that we could you know, f flex our muscle was at the ballot box. So the next time that a, uh, uh, a bid goes out, we feel that it should have guardrails and build upon the good work that Treasure Coast has done in the past with their historic guidelines, uh, the design guidelines of 2018, and we can even tighten them up a little bit more to help to integrate this neighborhood, um, which uh, in incorporates really two sites, site one and site two, um, and make sure that any future development is consistent with what we now design here for these two sites in particular. So. Um, when new property is acquired, we will expect them to conform in the future to these same guidelines, which I would argue conform more to the Fairfax and Salmon's design than to um, what the element would have been. And that includes some uh, restoration of the alleys with permeable surfaces. Um, we would have conforming lighting, AMA conforming lighting which has been, like Richard said, adopted by the United Nations. Um, we would have um, shade and walkable areas and some additional green space that really adds to the value of the community. And really, the, uh, the value of our community isn't just the dollars that come in, which we reap 10 years down the road after the um, uh, tax abatement has expired and then we get tax money. The, the real value to our community is building on our unique qualities that we have here. The Art Deco homes, Art Deco businesses and so forth and tr keeping that quality consistent. Um, and before I hand over the microphone, Gail, um, I wanted to touch on parking and tell me if I've missed anything on that because we had a long discussion about the um, what isn't really a parking problem so much as what is the problem with our parking? Well, we've got parking and I see that a lot of it is empty most of the time, at least, you know, behind the uh, shops here on Lake Avenue. Um, a lot of the time that is empty. The church next to my house is empty most of the time. Like, And there is such a thing as um, collaborative shared parking agreements that we could have with a number of the uh, open and available parking spaces. There's the uh, the Glades, the Church of the Glades, and there's the one on the east side of Federal with the um, the interesting um, architecture. architecture. <laughs> uh, that used to be the first Methodist. I think it was the first Methodist church because that's what it was when I got here. Um, so. Um, during uh, Fourth of July and during street painting, there really is a serious problem. Um, someone accosted me at the drum circle two weeks ago on the street above the, the beach and said, there's not enough parking up here. But I said to her that, that there's lots of green space here. We don't want to like impinge on that. If you go down below, it was half empty. And this was on a really busy night. It was full moon on a Saturday night. We had a great time up there. And it, it was, um, yes, it was busy. I couldn't, you know, I've got these big drums to unpack, and, and I needed those spaces, and I couldn't find one. I ended up going to the, um, to the decal residence spaces, and there were plenty. There was lots of spaces over there, so I just walked, you know. People aren't used to walking, I guess. So um, as far as parking is concerned, before we ever consider parking garages, we should u fully utilize the parking that's available to us. And there's a couple of ideas that would help with that. Rather than build out site one, for example, I guess it's site two, actually, where there's existing parking. There is a parking, uh, surface parking there now. Um, rather than think about a garage or any other kind of development, let's beautify that. Let's put in metered parking that's intelligent metered parking. For example, if you own a business or you're employed downtown, don't park right in front of your store. Let's leave that for customers and give you an advantage, a decal, to have free parking a couple of blocks away so that you know you leave parking open for visitors. Um, there's intelligent parking. There's also um, trolleys that's been talked about. We 
We used to have one of those, and I think that's a great idea. We might get, be able to get some ARPA money from the federal government for something like that because that is infrastructure. And uh, do you have anything else to say about the parking or anything? Um, I was going to was gonna check your notes. But also, as, as far as moving people around, because of the idea of shared parking, we've got the church parking lot on uh, North M, and um, it's always empty, so it could be revenue for them. The city could rent spaces. And the idea of also incubator business, one of those could be golf carts that are decorative, that are theme, um, you know, um, Hawaii theme or something, some type of fun decorative thing that moves people around on a smaller scale than a trolley. And uh, the fact that we do have people say, well, I can't find the parking spaces, I can't find the parking lot, but we do have those wayfinding signs. There may be too many, they may be too colorful, but we do have them now, and they do point out where those parking lots are. Um, one of the ideas uh, besides parking is the idea of like in Palm Beach, you have little vias and you have meandering and you find shady spots to sit down or just to rest or, or you know, to take a break from the public, from the busy urban area. And so we decided to actually to have um, parking spaces around, parking spaces in the alleys. So it, it also designated parking spaces, but also just available parking spaces. And you would walk th to use the alleys more as a, an amenity to the city, not just a spot that are behind the stores. You could actually um, have more murals, like when the street painting festival the people in the street painting festival could actually paint on the back of buildings to decorate those for in the alleyways. And you would have smaller parks that are scattered around the city. Um, we talked about the uh, expectations of when developers come to town because we do have this set zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan of a certain height of downtown, which Dana Little talked about. But then on top, and that is the expe expectation of when a developer has a property of how high density and intensity that they're allowed to go. But then the city has sustainable bonus program. And so the developer should not have the expectation that he gets to use that sustainable bonus program to add to the height, density, intensity within the city. It should just be that base comprehensive plan, zoning plan. Um, the, the new commission has tried to get rid of some of that sustainable bonus program by having it the bonuses, community bonus program, that it has to be on site as opposed to the last commission was allowing a uh, developer to put a dog park, a barbecue, a swimming pool, uh, a walkway around a retention pond, and they would get added height to that. And the new commission said no, all of those community bonuses have to be off site. But we would like them to eliminate that program altogether. Palm Beach Gardens is doing that right now. And also the developer got to set the value for that, those sustainable bonuses. And if that program goes forward, it should not be the developer that sets that value of the $30,000 barbecue or the $50,000 dog park with AstroTurf. With AstroTurf. No AstroTurf anywhere. Um, just, just one more one more thing. The city commission is talking about having historic districts west of Dixie. We're totally in favor of that. And we think the CRA should be having a program that, um, whether it be a rebate program with the rent the landlords who are renting these programs to um, make them more um, sustainable, um, improve them so that they're more airtight, and that would be within the, historic, the new historic districts. So to move their emphasis from uh, big development on Dixie and downtown and to improve the blight of the his new historic districts or the homeowner districts which are in their area and that we think that should be at their priority. Great job. Great job. Great okay, which tables do we have left? One and this table here. Okay, well, you guys can go last. Who's, uh, whose table is this? Steven, is this yours? 
Yeah, can you help uh, get the drawings up? Okay, table number one. Are you presenting for table number one? And you are Danielle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Danielle. Um, a lot of the thoughts we also concurred with at our table, con including the adding of the green spaces, um, maintaining the historic Art Deco and some of the architectural, so you've heard a lot about that. Um, we did have some mixed opinions at our table about the height restrictions. Um, there was some talk that some of us wanted to have the two to three story height restrictions just along Lake. There was some other opinions that maybe we'd want to go a little bit higher, but um, we can reserve that for another day. I feel like we had some radical out of the box thinking, um, which one of which was we wanted to attract more young people, and so one idea was to actually relocate City Hall from its current location and make the current City Hall into a community center, move the existing City Hall to the old Havana hideout, hideaway, which is right there, making it a multi-use space so that on the weekends and in the evenings it would, it would add to the existing cultural area that's across the street caddy corner but also provide for mixed use with some retail. The city hall offices could be on the second or third stories of that space. Um, we all agreed that we wanted to attract younger people by creating mixed use spaces where there might be retail on the first floor, but then having apartments on the second floor and apartments more on the smaller side to allow for younger people who don't want more than a one or two bedroom apartment or older adults who may not need more than a one or two bedroom apartment. We really wanted to bring um, more permanent residents to our town um, so that they're here year round instead of just seasonally. Um, we also talked about the transportation. So you heard some mentions about the golf carts. You heard mentions about a trolley. We'll take either. Um, but we could use that to bring people and use the parking around the existing city hall as an alternate parking to create more spaces so that then there'd be a system to bring people into the downtown if they didn't want to walk. But as we know, this is also very walkable. You could park and walk. We also talked about wanting to create um, a bike friendly environment and also because our town which I, I do think is unusual about our town that we have a lot of people that drive their golf carts around and golf carts I learned from Greg I don't know if he's still here that oh, I, so Greg educated me that the golf carts actually take up a smaller parking lot space so we talked about creating some golf cart parking which would then allow extra car parking and enable the people who have golf carts that are all around our town all the time to actually uh, park downtown. Another sort of radical out of the box idea that we had was to close off Lake entirely and make it pedestrian friendly, making Lucerne two way. But if that's too radical for you, we also suggested maybe closing off a side street. We just in this rendition suggested J Street. We named it the J Street Promenade and we could make that pedestrian friendly, um, which would enable more people to be in a walking area, which, you know, would be very nice to the to the city. Um, we talked about the shade trees. Uh, we talked about in that one lot that had, um, it's green right now. We did want to have some sort of park or green space that people, and that was mentioned by another group as well. And I think that might be everything. Did I miss anything? Beer garden. Oh, beer garden. Wow. We want a beer garden right downtown. We think we'll get a lot of action on that. So, and that was it. Oh, and, and Mel wants a pool, which was, Yes. <laughs> yes, but that was not agreed on upon by everybody at our table. So, but if there's a beer garden at the pool, then maybe we would do that. <laughs> yes. Right. You 
can see where we drew like a little U shape here. So this would become part of the cultural plaza with the second and third stories for the city hall buildings and having city hall right downtown in the middle of everything. And you bring all the office, instead of going here for one thing, here for another. Right. You've got the annex, you got city hall right there. And everything right in one place. But, but I just, I don't want to, I know I mentioned at the beginning and before I wrap, I just want to reiterate the community center. We don't have a community center downtown, and this could be a place for families, older adults, children, individuals. This could be used for rentals. This could be a multi-purpose. Uh, yeah, apparently it used to be an old theater. We could maybe bring that back to you, but it would be nice to have a cultural center in our town that's not in the downtown, but walkable to downtown. So. And that's it. Who's presenting for table two? Thank you, Danielle. Very good. Table two? Hi, I'm Susan Una, and this is Dave. David Savage. And uh, you've all done some fantastic presentations of all the tables. I mean, there's not much left to say. I mean, we, I think probably our table was very specifically dealing with uh, the L&M property. I mean, what we're going to do here, rather than uh, talking about the general, the whole city's perspective and things about uh, green spaces and I mean, green, green deck, a lot of things that you brought up that we just never even worth talking about. We didn't get that far. <laughs> we, we were arguing too much. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, one of the first things that was said, I think, that's important is that we would like to see perhaps uh, Lake Avenue um, closed off, as many of you have mentioned, and make it no parking on Lake Avenue. Let that it be a bike area that you can bike through the city because biking is an issue going down Lake Avenue. And, uh, the, and make it like in West Palm Beach, there's no curbs, so it's easy to walk here and there and, and could be then when you get down to the city, to the cultural plaza, it would just mesh into there. And that building would, I would like to see myself become a community center where the museum is and where the, where the um, new bookstore is, the bookshop, uh, rather than having it uh, be the utilities. In any event, that's my issue. Um, but we talked, we really, uh, once, and with this added need for parking because of the Lake Avenue being shut off or closed, I mean, open to just pedestrian traffic and perhaps uh, trolleys, there would be a need for parking. And we thought perhaps we looked at areas in the city that would be away from the, the, the structure here and perhaps do parking, even use like someone mentioned down by the church, we could perhaps do a community sharing of that parking lot, either by building up, making a parking, uh, perhaps with them. And so it would be close to these, this L&M property and make it easy to get access to the parking. Um, and then, of course, in the, in the event that that wouldn't happen, perhaps a parking could be here in combination with uh, some retail and small apartments in this section of site, of site two. But in site one, we kind of looked at having, as we discussed, um, maybe f five different buildings here and have them broken up. We don't, moving away, we were kind of in between. The, the element was too massive, and then the other uh, project that was brought up by the Arctic, I believe it's at this table, um, they're sort of in between the two, and having lots of walkways between these buildings, and perhaps the highest one being the one that's facing uh, <clears throat> Lake Avenue. Of course, the idea being that we need, we need to have a tax base, we need to have people coming and living in the town, and uh, hopefully young people and people with children, and uh, that this building probably would be the highest one facing Lake Avenue, and that there would be walkways coming from the lake and coming from, from M Street, and that's the other idea that we talked about was saving the building that's there, the historical building. Um, yeah, 17, right here. And sort of with that, starting from that point, then to build around it. Uh, not necessarily keeping the back of it, but then we sort of broke up these buildings would be would be also a combination of retail and apartments above, no more than two or three stories. Um, could be set with setbacks, important. Um, and uh, a walkability and shade and trees and more or less and less what, what you've all been talking about today. 
Um, I don't have much to add because it's pretty much been covered, but I think what I'm seeing is, is that the idea of a monolithic building in our neighborhood is probably out the window at this yeah. point. The only question that remains is what can we do that is sustainable for the developer and the city and the neighborhood. So, and our facilitator, bless his heart, wrote the first thing down here, balance is key. And I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Balance is key. Thank you very much. And thank you all for, this is still a great attendance and you all have endured. We have our last table. That was interesting. City Hall at the at this site. That was the previous table, or this one here. Okay, so we're at table number five. Last but not least, I am Ramsey McLeod, and this is Rich Raphael from the Mango Groves, and I'm from Royal Point, Siena, the west side of the city here. Um, we didn't get into the whole vision thing. We specifically focused on the L&M section and area in here and took into consideration back in February when the city and the CRA sat down, and we really found the history about how they came to be owners of these historic buildings and really found truthfully from the CRA, they don't want to be in the historic building preservation business. So with that in mind, I think we can do some very, very creative things. We want our city to become a hub of tourism and drawing lots of people in here with interest. Um, and I think where we started was with the old Chamber of Commerce building. And what we wanted to see there is have it set back, have a landscape type front to it, and have that become our information tourism hub, where people can walk in. It complements the cultural plaza, kitty corner across the street with more landscaping right there. Um, it's not right out in the front where it would be competitive with 2Js or any other retail businesses, and create a three, no higher than three-story structure where the bottom would be full of information about the city, an interactive map where, hey, I need to find where's the Italian restaurants, and they pop up on the city, and you punch that restaurant and you get their information. Where's, where's Matthew's Brewery, or where's this place or that? And have it so it's self-sufficient. Next to it where Havana Hideaway currently is, have that an open retail area specifically for the rental of electric bicycles or electric golf carts so that people that are at the golf stream can easily walk here and say, wait, what is this place all about? And find information readily available to them and be able to rent an electric bike. And if they want to ride it back to the golf stream, we can have an area there where they can park it and feel free to ride it over to the beach if they want instead of schlepping or walking where it becomes more welcoming to not only newcomers to our cities, but locals that don't know all the changes that are going on. And rather than having new commercial retail space, not competing with our already multiple empty storefronts, let's go more into what's gonna bring revenue into the city. So by making that a drawing point, the second and third floors, no higher than the third floor because we wanna maintain that lower structure for the, the eye-catching look when you come to the small town feel. With the facades obviously blending in with what exists already. Um, from there, what we wanted to do is, behind that area is currently a beautifully restored historic building that currently is being used by leisure services. We would like to see the museum relocated to that property. The other two, historic buildings that are on um, L Street relocated to the empty lot next to the exec existing building 
where it is occupied by leisure services so that then what we create here is an information center but that whole side on the west side of M Street then becomes a little glimpse of here's the historic part of Lake Worth. Here's what some of our structures are from back in the 20s. And again, you learn from the, hist the museum next door what our history is. It's kind of like a mini Lake Worth yesteryear village like they have out at the fairgrounds. A mini piece of it. Whereas back to the tourism center, you can find a map and if you want to take your electric bike and do a little cottage run, you can. You can on your own at your own leisure explore our town and see what's here and what's to offer. It also allows you to see the storefronts that are empty maybe for investment purposes. The second and third floors obviously can be utilized by small businesses as well. As you come down the block on the opposite side by if those historic buildings are able to be relocated and they are sufficiently in good enough repair that we can do that and retain them, that's what we'd like to do is keep them bunched together. When you open up that whole other side, we would open it up for residential residences. Even something perhaps that's on 6th Avenue South and Federal Highway, smaller structures that are taller where you can have some minor densification which brings revenue into the city. And you would utilize the alleyway to have parking behind these residences so you still have the streetway open. Um, there is already an existing two-story apartment building there. It's in good repair. There's no reason to bother with that. But we can still influence it by adding landscaping and more residential areas there. Um, where are we? Um, oh, we're upside down. I see. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get my navigational parts here. Um, the reason why I wanted to move the museum is to open up more office space into the annex because if you don't realize anything, as our city grows and more services are demanded, we need more employees. We have no space for employees to be able to function and provide the services that we need. So we have to start utilizing what we have. As was previously stated, they're in this house over here, we've converted that little place there and this, that, and the other thing. So what do we do with leisure services if we take them out of that space? They're in dire need. We have a new location for them. What we're thinking of is taking into consideration not only bringing in income and in residential areas here, but how do we utilize this prime location for multiple uses and also achieve more than one goal? As we move down to, I'm gonna use this map because now I'm all turned around. <laughs> and I apologize, but this is the area that we were talking about up here. So if we clear out this area, we have residential in here, and we have the, these historic buildings are moved over to this side. So then you can put residential in here with lots of landscaping, lots of shade trees, not palm trees, so we can do that. This area here, we definitely want to preserve all of this green. But you have a space here that's probably 135 by 100 foot. You could still put in some small residential housing in there that we could still densify that spot. Instead of just having an open green space, we can still make money and gain tax revenue from putting in residences there. This is where I'd like to see leisure services relocated. We'd like to build a three-story uh, complex there where leisure services would be on the bottom. And I'm emphasizing leisure services because if you're going to have tourism, you're going to have events. And we did a phenomenal job in six months for that department to pull off the street painting festival. And if any of you noticed, it went more smoothly than it has in the past. And they made very important decisions to support our businesses by closing the municipal parking lots and making it for the employees only for those businesses so it was a win-win in the sense that we really promoted bus in from Palm Beach State. And more people did that than even trying to come down here and attempt to find a parking space. So I think that leisure services needs to be given a place within the downtown area where they can facilitate 
events in the downtown area, events at Bryan Park or wherever. If we stick them on the other west side, it takes them forever to get stuff here. The other issue too is let's look at the beach and the casino building. Half of that building upstairs isn't being used because why they have to put it for storage. We have no storage or support. Right now, the little garage behind where Leisure Services is, no offense, it looks like Murphy's Closet because they've tried to put as much stuff in there as they can, but they have no storage space. And I live on this side of the town. We need this building here for our arts and development for our community. And I have no negativity to the CRA, but they need and deserve a space. So we put the building on the bottom floor's leisure services. That allows access for rental of other stuff and whatever they need to do. The second story can be for office space in that and the CRA. Let's give them a proper space to be or take the building and split it in half and give half to CRA and half to leisure services and allow them to be able to be approached in a building where they know it's their space. They don't have to constantly rearrange things so there can be an exhibit there. And allow them to have a, a location where developers can come in and talk to them and display things and whatever they need to do. We need to bring them more into the city because they now have been allowed to breathe and interact more. They're conducting different workshops and different uh, venues and things that are going on. So I think we need to support them and bring them in where people can feel like, hey, I can go over there and talk to them and say, hey, I have an opinion on this or that or the other thing. Right now, a lot of people don't think they're approachable or they're in a building where, oh, that's all art stuff. You know, let's give them a place where they belong and support our government employees that need to help us and make it a three-story structure and either the top or behind it, give enough of a storage space for leisure services to readily be able to support any and all events that we want to have in this town to pull people in to see what we're about and invest their money and pretends and perhaps even move here and live here. Now let's talk about parking. We got a little creative, and there's going to be some feedback on that, but here goes nothing. <laughs> okay, we have the Lake Worth Playhouse, and if any of you have come there to use it, you know they have valet parking. And what happens with valet parking? We lose all our street parking in front of our residences because they're driving the cars all over the place. So, we put in the three-story building for leisure services, CRA, storage, whatever else that will be. And behind it, we build a four-story parking garage. Hold your breath. Hang on now. We, we thought about this. Four stories, because parking garage's height is not identical to a floor height in a building, you can actually put in four stores, floors of parking with the same height as a three-story building. But what we want to do on the facade on the K Street side is to either do murals or treescape, landscape, something so that the residents on the other side of the street aren't looking at this concrete structure. It also allows us the ability to even potentially designate either a level or a section of it for employee parking, again, for the businesses downtown to support them and be able to have employees know there's a designated place that they can go and park. It also should alleviate some of the valet issues that are raised because people come home and it's like, now there's somebody else's car in front of my house and I can't park in front of my own home. So these are the things we really focused on this area, not the vision of the entire city, because we know this is the hot spot right now where we need to concentrate and focus on giving our opinions and our ideas to the people who can make it happen. Facades for the building we feel all need to blend in with the architecture that surrounds it, but we wanted to take into consideration too the fact that as our city grows, we need to provide spaces for our employees. We don't have the ability, I mean, it took forever, now we're finally gonna get the public works building fixed. So, but then to go through every single department, it's really squeezing everything. 
Maybe human resources needs to come over the information center and that's where they need to be located, where it's centrally to where people can find it, they can have parking, we can provide, uh, okay, hang on Ramsey. We can provide the access to renting mobile vehicles that they can get around that aren't polluters and the rest of it. And Ralph, you're gonna, Rich, tell me what I forgot because I know there's some other things. Actually, you didn't leave out too much. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, we talked about, uh, you know, the uh, uh, being able to uh, have some level of mobility. You know, we also uh, realized that, you know, we got, uh, we want to encourage seniors to be able to come here. I, I keep hearing a lot about uh, having the younger folks come and enjoy walking around the town. But we also have a bunch of seniors that don't always have the same capability that the that the younger people do. And for them, you know, you do need some parking available downtown. You know, everything cannot be on bikes, everything cannot be golf carts. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, we do agree that uh, we have a significant part of the population that does look for the, um, you know, does look for the electric bikes, for the golf carts and whatnot. Um, one of the main things that we looked at was we realized that the city of Lake Worth Beach has a very unique profile. Within maybe the entire state of Florida, we're unique. We have the small town vibe. We don't want to turn us into another Delray or Miami Beach. We don't want to lose what we currently have. So that's why we said, okay, maybe you know, going, you know, changing downtown to allow two to three stories but not anymore. We did have, I will admit, we had one person that was in favor of four stories. I just want to give her a shout out. <laughs> yeah, and, and her home address is. Oh. <laughs> um, um, no idea is a bad idea. But, um, yeah, no, but, but the idea is to do what we can to keep our small town look because as soon as we lose that then there's not that much more that differentiates us from our neighboring you know oceanside towns and i think that's pretty important i i, I think that's pretty much it then. and i think one of the main things too and i've heard a lot of suggestions about shutting lake that lake avenue down but we've seen how a one-way in and out in Delray Beach is just a nightmare, Atlantic Avenue. And if you're gonna turn Lucerne into that, it's not gonna be a positive for our city. It's gonna be like nobody can get to the beach because there's no way there. And I personally think that's what makes our small town more unique than any other, is we have a two-lane road to the beach and we have a two-lane road out of the beach. And I think that that makes us unique and we are striving hard to keep old Florida small town feel here while all of the big high rises are creeping all around us and West Palm is continuing to just densify and go higher and higher. And we can be the diamond in the rough that everybody overlooks because we are belligerent and we refuse <laughs> That was the right word. We are belligerent, <laughs> and we refuse to be sucked up with the high development. And I am a total supporter of when we go forward with more development, let's bring in Palm Beach County developers who know what a small town is and how to build in that town that complements the investments of already the existing residents. We've all either purchased homes here or made investments in here. And personally, I want to see us happen that. And thank goodness of the CRA, we have a developer here who has taken his ideas to the residents and totally changed his original concept of throwing in 41 one-bedroom apartments in these empty lots. We are getting two and three-story homes with garages for families to move into. And the facades on the outside are going to be more old style Florida with Bahamian windows and, or, you know, sh thank you, sir. Um, 
and the tin roofs. And it's going to be cute, and it's going to just show that we are the entrance to this city. It doesn't start at Dixie Highway and go to the beach. And we're working very hard with this developer to ensure that feel happens when you come from the roundabout and you start into Lake Worth. It's like, oh my God, this is like an upscale South American community because it is. This is South America on the west side of the tracks. And I love the diversity that we have here and the contributions that these people bring with their skills and their levels and their cultures and their different foods. And we need to promote that. And when you come in the city and you see that, you're like, wow, this is really an eclectic and extremely diversified city, not separated by different cultures and beliefs or people, but that we, right out the bat, when you come in the gate, we welcome everybody, and our architecture reflects generations of developing this city in a way that accommodates everyone's input. And we're all together as a joined community. And I think going forward, when we start with this, it'll start to be the ripple in the pond, and you're going to see all the new developing that's happening is going to be following in that mindset. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Well, again, I have to say we've done this a few times, and I'm very impressed with how many of you have stayed throughout the entire day. Um, no, I mean that sincerely. And I'd also like to welcome Commissioner Stokes. Thank you for being here. Um, to reiterate... We will be here um, starting tomorrow morning, this afternoon. We're going to take a tour and then get folks into their hotels and things. But starting tomorrow morning, we'll be in this room until Wednesday evening. Um, and we're going to do our best to develop the ideas and concepts that have come up. Uh, you know, we think we're pretty smart, but we always learn a lot when we have these, these events. And I heard things today that never even crossed my mind. So... We have to explore those. I just, um, just so you know, we will, like I said earlier, we're listening to what you're saying, and we're going to work very, very hard to try to come up with concepts and recommendations that hopefully, you know, most people can get behind. Um, there are some policy things that we need to look at. This idea of the bonuses and setting the base height as the maximum height. You know, um, these are things that, that we need to explore and understand the implications of. But very, very elevated conversations today and uh, a lot of enthusiasm. I'm really impressed. So please give yourselves a hand. Way to go. And um, final thing, just a reminder that the doors are open all day, every day, between now and Wednesday evening. Feel free to come and visit us, sit down, talk to us. Um, Drew will make sure to have paper cups. No plastics, styrofoam, none of that. Um, but honestly, thank you very much for your time and uh, come visit us this week. If there are any lunches left, please feel free to take them with you. Bye-bye. Thank you.